Way Off Topic Radio, Red Dragons Radio. What's up, everybody? Uh, like to introduce a new guy to Way Off Topic. Um, really, uh, um, I'm all kind of, kind of scared. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to introduce Ronnie from the Dark Somnium YouTube channel that I'm very fond of, and um, I'm very happy and honored to have him here. So, Ronnie, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing tonight? Very well, sir. Very, very well. So, uh, so what's new, man? What's new? What was that? I said, what's new? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing much. Just working on some uh, uh, collaborations. I uh, recently hit 70,000, so I've been trying to put together something for it. A lot of people have been asking me, like, are you going to do something for uh, 50,000 subs or 60,000 subs? And I'm like, nah, not really. Maybe just uh, make more videos. But uh, I kind of want to do something this time, so... I'm trying to put together a collaboration, but uh, those are always a hassle. But it's still fun. That's awesome, man. And it's like it it it's like really good to see, you know, because um, there's a lot of creators out there that they really deserve more than the ten thousand they have. I gotta tell you, it's just it doesn't seem like they ever get it. And I mean, like Don, like Don Willie's like the prime example, I think, where he deserves a lot more, you know, subs. Like when he was doing it full time. And he just didn't get him there. That's kind of like jaded him a little bit, I think. But uh, I mean, uh, I I don't know if you're in the Game of Thrones at all. I was. I wasn't up up until like season five. Uh, then I just kind of got sick of all my favorite characters dying. So <laughs> I was like, you know what? Nah, nah, nah. nah, nah. Uh, that's kind of the point of the whole story. I think everybody's pretty much going to die. <laughs> and, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, if if there's one if there's one person standing, I, I I'd be really shocked. <laughs> I, I get that. My my thing about like uh, Game of Thrones, and not to take it like too seriously, I guess, but at the same time, uh, like I, I know that uh, one of the things that goes for it is that is that like you know, hey, in, in real life, you know, people die all the time. You, just because uh, a lot of people like you doesn't mean you're not going to die. Uh, but for me, the reason I watch TV is to not be reminded of real life. Like, you know, it's like yeah, like I know people are going to die. I don't watch TV to be reminded about that. I watch TV to. Uh, Escape, escape that you know mm -hmm. uh it's like an emo like for me it's just like when i was watching game of thrones it's like if Jon snow ever ever dies i'm just i'm done like he, he, he i'm pretty sure he's still alive but i'm not sure i heard he got stabbed and i was like oh yeah of course he did yeah i mean spoiler alert I, bottom line is you know we've talked game of thrones you know you don't have to worry about saying anything we we've been talking game of thrones on way off topic for uh, the last three years man and um <clears throat> you know, I've I've had so many Game of Thrones YouTubers on. You know, like uh, I'm I'm really proud of Kev from Bridge Four. I I had him on uh, when he had like maybe 400 subs, but like th there was something about the dude where he was so just like the things that he would talk about was really interesting to me, and uh, he just hit 110,000 subs. Yeah, so nice. I'm, I'm pretty happy for him. That, that's like a about a year and a half later, so. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> like, it, 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 are, are there any other channels? I mean, I mean, you, you, uh, first off, let, let's just focus on your channel first before we start, you know, throwing everybody else about, right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, you have a, uh, an ongoing, uh, story series right now. And for everybody that doesn't know, like, um, the term creepypasta, you know, it, uh, it is what it is, and there it's the it, and then that's the genre. I mean, people know that creepy pasta is a is a word. I I wish they they could come up with something a little bit different, but it is it is still a, a very awesome genre with a, a lot of talented narrators on it and everything, and a lot of great stories on it. Not just all oh, spooky ghosts, but which the name kind of stereotypes it too. But that's why I mean, like, I think a new name would be great. But besides the point, um, it, uh. There are so many great, talented narrators on there with some really great channels and like the stories they pick. <clears throat> I mean, like first, off, first off, Ronnie, like how many stories do you probably go through that you don't do compared to the ones that you do pick? Like, what's the ratio? So honestly, that's um, that's kind of weird. Like, uh, so a lot of people say I have really good taste in stories I narrate, but the what's really weird about that is that. Like I have really bad ADHD, and uh, it makes it very difficult to 
pre-read stories. Like once I've read a story, I lose all interest in reading it again, listening to yeah. it again. Mm-hmm. So I actually don't pre-read stories. The, I pick stories based on how interesting I think their names are. So I like whenever all the audio in any of my videos, the audio in the video is the first time I'm reading that story. I don't know what's happening in the story. Like I, I'm kind of like uh, the audio is me uh, like uh, learning about what's happening in the story at the same pace as the viewer. So I don't know what's going to happen at the end when I started when I started recording. Um, and uh, that's good and bad. I feel like it makes my uh, narrations a little bit more realistic because the character in the story wouldn't know either. Right. So it, it makes my reactions and the way I say things a little bit more real. But at the same time, it's it's bad because sometimes I'll get halfway through a story and be like, oh, this story is uh. like, you know, <laughs> Luckily, that doesn't happen too often. That's honestly only happened like like I've made about 500 videos. That's only happened about two or three times. Okay. Uh, so when people when people will say I have good taste in stories, I narrate, I'm like, I don't know how. I'm probably the one person that would have the worst taste because I don't even pre I just, like I just based it on how interesting the names are. Like when I have come across stories that like I'm like I don't think this will work on my channel or I don't like the writing in it, I usually just delete the audio and go find something else. But that doesn't happen too often, honestly. So you're a lot like me because yeah. like okay, say ISCP for example, the Sports Car Podcast, we're very guest oriented and we don't do much as far as IndyCar drivers go, you know, because what am I going to ask them? What am I going to ask them that people can't go find them answer the same question 20 different places, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the three series that lead up to IndyCar, there is a a huge group of, of drivers that, A, they really need the exposure to get money to race, and, B, they're just interesting dudes, you know? Most of them are 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 poor with a dream and they spend all their money on what they're doing now. <clears throat> and, uh, it's just real interesting shit. Like Chris, you know, our, our one co-host, he came on and he was one of those guys. And after he was on for the first time, he just never left for a year. <laughs> but like, he has the, like the most amazing radio voice I've ever heard. Like, do, do you remember that, um, that a uh, homeless guy that was singing or not, or not singing? He was saying like, FM radio callbacks for money under the yeah bridge. no yeah I forget his name um I don't remember uh, it, it f- fuck his name and fuck what he did after the fact because <laughs> uh, who who would have thought the alcoholic would have went back to booze but my point being is um remember that voice just that 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 wow voice that he had yeah that's Christian to a T he has that voice and I was like. Oh my God, you're the homeless guy under the bridge. <laughs> and he goes, well, "What's that supposed to mean?" Because he's because he, he's African American, so he might he took that kind of racist. And but I, <laughs> I I don't know why because I I didn't know that that was a stereotype for them that living under I didn't bridges. Either. You know, I, if nothing, it would you you would say that to me, and I'd probably be more offended. <laughs> Fucking hobos, white trash, right? <laughs> so I got you. anyway, my point being is, um, he's a good guy, dude. You know, he, he does he doesn't take anything serious, and ne- neither do I. So that's why he doesn't get mad. So my point being is, um, lost my point. Go. <laughs> it's, uh, back, it's back to you. Oh no. Um... <laughs> Uh, well, I wasn't prepared for this. Um, uh, two major ADHD guys. <laughs> Let's do are you show. excited for the for the new uh, Glass movie? Movie about Glass? No, Glass. You no, know, like sequel to Split. You've seen that? Uh, no, no. Oh, Split. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, you're going to say that after you didn't see what was it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, oh, Pulp Fiction, that's right. You've Pulp ne- Fiction. You've never seen Pulp Fiction, and you're going to go, oh, to me, not seeing yeah, Glass. Because it's, an, it's an old movie. No, I'm joking. Um, what do you nah, mean old fine. movie? My it's, favorite it's, movie it's, is uh, Does Boot. That's 30 years old. <laughs> I, nah, my favorite movie is The Shawshank Redemption. That's, oh, uh, something all right, like, all right. That's, yeah, yeah no, that, no, that's a camera high five right there. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah right there. <laughs> but uh, I won't. I guess I won't spoil anything for you, but... Um, I really can't say anything about it without spoiling something. So I guess just watch Split sometime. It's a good movie. I like it. I think you'll like it. Who's in it? Um, 
I forget his name. Let me go check. He's freaking amazing, though. Uh, so the main plot of the story is about this guy who has like 24 different personalities. He has like multiple personality dis- uh, disorder. And one of the personalities kidnaps a bunch of like little girls. And he's like holding them hostage and stuff. And then the other personalities are like, you know, like, hey, no. They're trying to like uh, get out for help. But that one personality is like stopping. It's, it's kind of confusing to explain. But it's a really damn good movie. And it's um, uh, James McAvoy. That's it. Uh, he plays the main character. He's really, really good at just like playing all the characters. He's a damn good actor. Uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. You know who James McAvoy is? No. Uh, he plays. Uh, I mean, if I've uh, seen him, well, Prof- so- have you ever seen uh, D- uh, X Men: Days of Future Past? He plays young Professor X. Uh, I got to think about super thing, mo- superhero movies. But um, it did get a 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb. Yeah, that's a damn good movie. Seven, it's like uh, seventy six Rotten it's, Tomatoes. You can uh, wow by M Night Shyamalan. It's definitely his return to being good after crap. Like I was so happy that movie was good because he, like uh, M Night Shyamalan's like Signs, The Village. They're so so freaking good. You like, loved the, the Village too. I love the yeah. The soundtrack from The Village is one of the things that inspired me to start writing music. We're the two. Uh, We're the two. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I I really love it, but. Dude, uh, then, so like, many after people that, hate it. Like, after that, he just kind of went insane. Uh, I I don't know what he was doing. Then that, like Avatar: The Last Airbender, that was like one of my favorite uh, shows when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And he, my oh, brother too. I I I I've never I, the only one movie I've ever just walked out of was the was the Avatar, the one the M Night Shyamalan directed, like the live action version of The Last Airbender. It was so bad. It was. He he even admitted that he never even watched a single episode of the show. He just agreed to do it because his daughters liked the show. And I'm, I'm just that. like that. I'm just like you, bitch. I'm sure your daughters didn't like this. Like, <laughs> like what are you doing? Like at least watch one episode of the show. Oh. If this is the and, best, is if this is the best you could do for your children, I, I mean, you're you're just a tar- t- 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 you're just a terrible dad. <laughs> and then like and then he did <laughs> Devil, which I, I loved mean, like, it. I like Devil. You lo- okay, so like that movie wasn't bad. I liked it. But what – and it's, it's not that this one scene made – like ruined the whole movie for me. It just made it very hard for me to take it seriously. It's that stupid-ass scene with the security guard and the damn bagel and stuff. And he like – he's like going insane over you. He like – he's like look at the – he like drops the the toast on the ground and it la- lands butter side down. So he deduces from that that one of the people in the elevator is the devil. Like sounds like some schizophrenic stuff right there. Like, I didn't – I, I – w- like I didn't catch it at first, to be honest with you, but then you know because I have the DVD because I really like the movie and it was shot right over here in the Comcast building in Philly, um, so I see it, I see it three times a, a day. So it was I thought that was kind of cool, but at any rate, um, when I watched the end, uh, you know, special features and you know Little M Night Show with Amanita, he's talking about the movie and he talks about how the what you just said, I went, oh, God, you just ruined the movie for me. <laughs> like, like I, I think that otherwise the movie was was good. I liked it. Like, not uh, great. It was it was it was OK. But it that was one serviceable. Part, it was, serviceable. It, it, that one part made the whole thing kind of hard to take seriously. I, I don't know why. But but anyway, split it, it like like it's it's in my opinion, it's like it's as good as signs the village like it's it's. It's his, and that's because apparently he wrote this script back then, like he wrote the script for Split and the next one back when he was like you know back then when he was good. <laughs> like I was just not to say that uh, he can't write good scripts anymore, but you know it's like it's more of his. Uh, you can see, like see his older films in it, and it's. Re- I just think it's really good. That's awesome. Like yeah, I'm reading about it now. It looks fucking great. I am shocked that it's based in Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. If you're reading, you probably shouldn't read about too much because there's a big plot, t- like big, you know, it has this like uh, you know, final Wikipedia. plot twist at the end. Yeah. Uh, what now? Yeah, yeah. It, like, uh, uh, it, yeah uh, Wikipedia's first page will just give you a brief summary, and then you can go to plot and everything if you want to. But I didn't. Right. So, right, but cool. but I went to sequel to see uh, Glass. So yeah, gla- Glass is, um, has Samuel. No <laughs> mind, can't say anything about that because that'll give stuff away. Uh, well, I mean, um, I mean, are they supposed to do an Unbreakable two? Which I, I, I almost my like my sides hurt when I heard that. Your sides hurt? Why? I just don't like sequels. 
I have a thing with sequels. Well, I mean, okay, you may you probably saw it on the damn Split is Unbreakable 2, and Glass is Unbreakable 3. And it's so damn good. Oh, so that's what they were. That's what he kept talking about doing the sequels. Okay, so he took it in a different direction, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so like uh, it's uh, I guess now spoiler time. Probably should have said that before, but um, no, no, that's uh, fine. I'm not gonna gonna give away much about Split Two, but you know how in in, in Unbreakable it gave Bruce Willis a story. In this one, it gives James McAvoy's story. uh, He's the villain, and then in Glass, it's it's Bruce Willis versus James McAvoy. And uh, Samuel Jackson's kind of pulling the strings in the background. That's all he can do. I mean, he might break him, break his hand pulling a, a string. You know what I mean? Oh, ow! <laughs> I mean, it's it's just oh, it's so it split is so good. And then the tie-in with Unbreakable. Oh, my goodness! See, I, I didn't like Unbreakable. You didn't? No. Well, that's that's fine. That's understandable. I actually didn't really like it either. <laughs> but I, uh... yeah, it was it was so anticlimactic. It's like, I get it, this guy's instructable, and I get it, this guy can't cough without breaking his chest. So, and I get the superhero needs a supervillain, but why did Bruce Willis have to care at all? I never understood. So, well, I don't know why he cares yet either, because that won't explain <laughs> until uh, the third one, but... um. I, I, because he wrote these scripts back when he wrote Unbreakable. He, so he, he intended to make these three movies back then, but uh, I guess he just, for one reason or another he didn't. For one, yeah, for one reason or another he decided to make the shittiest movie in the world, of uh, Lady <laughs> in the Water, and then the second shittiest in the movie in the world, uh, Mark Wahlberg uh, fights trees. Uh, oh, yeah. the happening! Oh, ugh. oh. Yeah. I mean, you know, they ran out of things for Mark Wahlberg to say to be uh, really schmarmy with and kill him or something. So, like, the thing about about the happening is that it from okay, not not necessarily makes sense, but like no, I can see the I can see the message he was going for and what he was trying to do could be explained in a scientific way because uh, there's actually a lot of uh, plants in nature that do things like that that will uh, release spores that basically take over the minds of of whatever like they're basically fungus and then the, a, the game the last of us was based on it um yeah where, I mean, like, like things evolve to defend themselves you don't think uh, that the trees will too since we're just murdering all of them have you heard the story i narrated called runners no so that's a very messed up story i i wouldn't recommend re- listening to it but if you do that it, that's a similar st- style of fungus in that um, I can't remember what it's called. It has a really confusing name, but uh, pr- primarily what it does is it's a fungus that infects the brain of like whatever it, it attaches itself to, and then it makes the the whatever it's controlling uh, do things to spread the fungus. Like uh, in bugs, it'll make them like crawl up to like the highest point that they can to get as much sunlight, and then the fungus will kind of like burst out of their head and grow, and then the spores will release in the wind and go catch other things that'll make them go up to like tops of trees plants stuff like that uh okay. that's an actual real thing that happens like what he was trying to do in the happening he could have done in a much less stupid way <laughs> because uh like that's not too far off of, like what things in nature can do things in nature can just make you kill yourself you know if they if they if it would help their evolution or yeah, i mean survive. like like eat a bad berry that's poisonous what do you think the thing's doing to you like I mean. But yeah, I, that's uh, the happening could have been better. I can see what he was going for, but he just did it in the most cringy well, way possible. I mean, and it's fine if you're going to create something for a message. I just don't. I think his messages are very dumb. Yeah, I got you. Like it, it, it's just like you know, um, I gotta tell you, dude. There was twenty people already that have conveyed this message so much better. When you could have done something so much better <laughs> because you didn't move the needle at all if anything you hurt the cause <laughs> so but i mean i but i love the village man i like i love at the end of that movie i was so mad i was so mad at the end of that movie and not not i wasn't mad at the <laughs> plot twist well i guess you could say i was <clears throat> but like i was so into the movie that i was mad at the adults like i wanted to strangle him 
You know nah, what I mean? Gotcha. Because yeah. I, I don't like cults. You know what I mean? Like I don't like that whole mind control over people. Because I mean, I have a big problem with uh, groups like that. I'm not going to go into any more of that. You know, I don't like offending people. So my point being is, is like at the end of that, when she came back and all, and and they decide to keep the lie going, even though it cost a life. You know. Whatever, it's one life to save million. No, motherfucker, you guys are committing like some serious laws. <laughs> like, how about you give yourselves in and let these uh, people go? <laughs> but eh, whatever, that's what. Piss- but I loved it because it evoked an emotion out of me. That's all I'm asking for, you know, and not the emotion of oh, you suck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel- and that's why I like the village a lot because he sold me, dude. He had me he, the first time, anyway. But he really did have me. Did 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 he have you the first time? Um, what do you mean he had me? Like you know, like when she climbed the fence, and all of a sudden there's a truck that pulls up. Did were were you shocked to see that? Yes, I I was. Um, however, I feel like it was a different type of climax. Like, uh, it's more. It was. It's not something like like that was like led up to like oh this is kind of like what's the story has been building to it was more of kind of like a blind side out of nowhere here's some here's some facts like and I'm like wait what's happening what's going on <laughs> it's like it's not like uh like oh I've been waiting for this moment the entire movie to reveal like these mysteries and then oh snap you know and they were in the modern day all along it's more like oh she climbed over this wall hey there's wait is that a jeep like was that supposed to be in here or was that a mistake like you know type of moment you know. Yeah, and, but, but at the same time, it was still good. Yeah, and and if you think about it, man, do you like? I don't think people realize how big this country really is. <laughs> you know, just just because it might be crowded around where you are, and especially people in like my area, they think like the whole world's like this. But you know, after traveling so much to all these races, and I don't like to fly, so we drive. You know, and some of them are twenty hours long. Um, you, you get to see a lot of the country and there is a lot of like nature preserve and everything else and national parks that are the size of, you know, like half, half a state sometimes. And, uh, you know, the things that they can get away with if you, if they really wanted to, I I mean, chances are there's something going on right now like that and we wouldn't even know it because there's enough room to do it. Definitely. Manson pulled it off and they went to the desert. So, I I still know how he got that boat there. I'd love to know how he did that. Did you ever hear about that? No, but I'm actually uh, doing research for. I was gonna. I was thinking about starting a new series uh, where I discuss like true events like that, but m- more so in an educational format. Uh, kind of like there's similar to the show Unsolved Mysteries, but less without. I don't like the. I don't like the idea of. Uh, using tragedies as entertainment so like uh that's why i don't really read true scary stories but at the same time i do see the value in educational like learning about things like it's good to know that that happened you know it's it's good to know but at the same time it's not good to glorify this like this person for it like uh like like a lot of people look at like the columbine uh shooters uh Manson, Dahmer, and then think that they're cool. Like I've heard people use the phrase, "What's your favorite? Who's your favorite serial killer?" And I just want to smack the shit out of them. Be like, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be a favorite if they killed someone you knew. Like, and, 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 see, and see, the sick part is, is half of them do it because of that recognition right there. I know that's a, a, a lot of motivation for a lot of the school shooters recently. Like they've openly admitted that they did it because they wanted to be on the they wanted to be famous, and a lot of people like. If you're if you're the type of person that feels like you yourself don't really matter, like you're getting you you have no impact in the world, you're not gonna like once you die, everyone's gonna forget about you. Like it only it only takes a, like that thought and the willing like the uh, capability of doing something like a school stream and like it's just like hey, well this is the only thing like if I if I want to be remembered, you know here we go. Yeah, it's just like like I mean like. Me personally, when when I die, if people remember and say that, well, he he always was exactly who he is, no matter who he was around or whatever. If that makes sense to you, mm-hmm. um, because I know a lot of people that they change depending on who they're around, and that instantly makes me not trust them. 
because then I don't know who you are. You yeah, I, mean? I got you. Yeah. Like my like my next door neighbor, he's the same way, dude. It drives me absolutely insane. <clears throat> so I can't trust him. But you know, I I I just don't want people to say that uh, did, we didn't know who he was. Like I want them to know, like yeah, he, you know, he said what he wanted to say, he spoke his mind, stood up for, for where for what he thought was right and everything. And he was just a real dude. That's all I ever want to be remembered for. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I uh, totally get that. How about you? I I understand what you mean. Like uh, I um. <clears throat> I'm not very good actually at social cues and like judging people's personalities. So I, if I know it's going to make me sound like gullible and stupid, but like if somebody presents themselves to me in a certain way, you know, until they b- completely blindside me, I'm not really going to have suspicions about who they are. Uh, yeah, which like, has happened in the past, but when that happens, it's kind of like, all right, well, you know, screw you. I guess mm-hmm. we're not friends anymore type of thing. Um, otherwise I don't really, uh, like second guess people i'm not saying that it's bad to do that or that uh, no it's not bad to do it at all uh it's uh it's probably better to do it to be cautious about who you know like instead of just like believing people as they present themselves but uh you give the people the benefit of the doubt first off it's like you know what i'll show you respect and you're gonna have to lose it first instead of yes essentially which which is has been bad sometimes but at the same time not really i I feel like like uh, mainly when i Give, when I trust the wrong people, but yeah. um, for the most part, I feel like it, like it's been um, easier to like um, just like it's better to, in my opinion, it's better to uh, just assume you're going to have a good time than kind of be on the fence about it and have to worry about having a good time. You know, it's like uh, I don't mean that in the regard of friends. I just mean that like kind of like the, the glass is half full, or the glass is half, half empty type outlook. Right. Um, you can think of it one way or the other, but one way is going to affect how you enjoy life, you know? Yeah. And, and plus like if, if I think you're the one way, then you're always looking for something bad to happen. And if that's the case, you always find something if you want to. Yeah. And the same, exactly. and the, the opposite is the same. If you're always positive and you're looking for something good to happen, most of the time you'll, you'll either make it happen or it will happen because, you know, <laughs> There, you know, people do get what they deserve eventually, um, unless you're me and there's nothing, there's no rhyme or reason to it actually happening. <laughs> it just does. <clears throat> but at any rate, but uh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And uh, you, you, you did say something again that like popped that uh, question into my head that I had before. I lost it again, so forget it. <laughs> oh no problem. Man. So, um, so when you started now, like I would say the the one video I saw of yours where <clears throat> I was like, you know what, he's a real dude right there. Like it was that video, and I'm sure you get it a lot of times, but uh, and I think you know what I'm going to say. But the video w- that you made in your car, I think it was uh, yeah. back in October or September. I, I've had to stop myself from deleting that video so many times. Don't delete it. I feel like I come off like all. Uh, oh, poor me. No. Know, type, no, no, no. But, like, I'm not trying to. I'm just always self-conscious about, like, uh, like, um, could try, like, I, I don't want to give off the impression that I'm trying to make people feel bad for me or anything like that. So, mm. it's kind of been a struggle to not, not want to, uh, not delete that video. But, yeah, a lot of people do, uh, t- like, message about that video whenever they say, whenever they, uh, like talk about like my channel as a as more than just a channel whenever they talk about like me personally they reference that video well it's just one of those things where it's like i look at it as like a uh, you know oh yeah you know fucking good for him like an inspirational type of thing mm-hmm. uh, now that's me because i'm a normal person i'm a normal human <laughs> being now uh rightfully so you're gonna have people you know saying all types of horrible mean shit because that's what they do on YouTube. I don't understand it, the mindset that these people have. Um, but, you know, I would say take the good with the good and the bad with nothing at all because they don't matter. Yeah. I know. haven't really had any negative comments. More so just like my my own uh, worry <laughs> of, like, you know, giving off the wrong impression with the video. But Hey, and, like, I, I I don't know about you, but I don't like being on video. Like, the, where I'm not recording this video, by the way, it's just the audio. 
Oh, I got you. It's just easier to have a like a face to face video conversation. It makes the. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make it. It 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 makes sure that the conversation is more, you mm-hmm. know, fluent and and generic. <clears throat> but that blew me away that you just said that. You legitimately you you narrate your stories right off the bat without you ever reading them. That's mm-hmm. that's um, that's like fucking the, hardcore, dude. I don't know if anyone who does that. Uh, uh, yeah. So like the um the uh, why I don't do drugs anymore video. Um, I didn't know. I was going to really do any sound design video for that video until I was like, okay, so these words are repeating six times. Maybe I should just say it once and then like edit it a bunch type of thing. Cause I had no idea what was happening in the story until I read it. So, right. Right. Yeah. I mean the, the I mean, the, but that's like uh that video isn't exactly a normal type of video he did. Although I thought it was awesome because it did remind me of trip and face. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> some, some videos like with that, it's hard for me to like, well not like sometimes I'll get the emotion wrong. And then I'll be like, oh, I was like the biggest example of that is um, there's a story I, d- I narrated called uh, Notes to the Girl Whose House I Live In. And it's about like this. Uh, I don't know what the hell the main character is. I don't know if he's a person or like a sentient rat or something like the way he talks makes you makes it not sure. Like he'll be like, oh, yeah, eat the spiders and stuff in your attic. But all at the same time, I can't get your Wi-Fi password. Like like it's like really confusing as to what the <laughs> hell he, if he's a person or not. But um Anyway, when I was reading that story, I didn't know what the mood was supposed to be. I thought it was supposed to be kind of like creepy, like, you know, like a stalker type feel. But then right. at the when I got towards the end, I realized it's not. It's actually a sad story. So I had to go back and re- like redo the story to get the tone right. Because I knew that if like if I didn't have the tone right, there was no point in me even doing the video because it would have just sounded ridiculous. Once you get to the end, you realize, oh, well, he's not he's not actually insane. Why is he why does he talk like that? You know, <laughs> that's kind of funny. But I mean, but but if you think about it, like how many stories do you really have to go back on normally? On, uh, only, like on I've only ever had to do it twice. So there you go. I mean, like that's a. I mean, instead of reading them all and then doing them all, and and the way you do it, I mean, you're able to to push out content faster. Which YouTube YouTube loves it. The algorithm loves that shit. And uh, you know, um, you can pump out so many different videos. It's it just seems like the best way to do it. Plus, I don't know, like to me, and and maybe that's why I I I like it so much. Is like it, like it it's just so I don't know. It's very generic and natural sounding, and that's the best way you want to do it. So that's why like all the shows that we do, it's all generic and natural sounding because there's really no script. Maybe there's a there's a path we're going to go down, but there's no script at all. It's it's whatever we want to talk about, and and people seem to like really. Uh, enjoy that more than a script, you know, because you can tell when people are narrating something like, uh, you know, that that one that one kid that I can't believe so many people listen to chills or something, whatever. Uh-huh. You, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what people see in him. Oh hi ho. Well, the thing about chills is that like, um, he he, the, he drives me nuts. Well, the thing about that is like I feel I actually have a lot of respect for him. For doing his videos because i don't know if you know but the reason he talks like that is because he has a collapsed lung and uh like really yeah, because I... see he did a he he did a live stream like two months ago and talking about exactly the reason why he talks did not mention a thing about a collapsed lung really no he mentioned it in a different video hmm. yeah it was it was a live stream he was just like i don't know people just say because he's and he's talking normally and he and he's just saying you know yeah, like I get it all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been talking like this since since I was in first grade. Here, I'll I'll show you and I'll read something. I don't know this is the difference to myself. And he reads it and he reads in that word cadence, and then he's like, "Yeah, I'll have to look back. I don't ever look back, whatever." And I'm like, "Is he trolling, or really? is he serious?" I'll have to find the video where I, where he said that though. Yeah, and it was, I mean, I didn't see that live stream, so was, if I had it. It was definitely about June, July ish. Oh, yeah, I'll look it up. There. Yeah. But yeah, because I I always thought that was the reason why. So I was like, well, you know, at least he's out there trying. And even still, like even if even if he doesn't, and that's just how he normally talks. Like I've had people hate on my voice a lot, like, and I've been discouraged from making videos. Oh, don't ever listen to anybody. Fuck that. Well, I, I, I mean, I know, I know, not to like. I can take criticism. Like, not everybody that watches my videos has to like them. 
Uh, and I understand that not everyone will. That there are some people that will just straight up dislike my voice, and that's totally fine. But um, uh, for a while, like, you know, because for the first year of me doing YouTube, I gained about 3,000 subs. Uh, and then within the second year of doing YouTube, I gained 70,000. But um, within that first year, Which is awesome, like a lot by of the, the way. Well, thank you. A lot of the comments I got within that first year were um, like saying they didn't really like my voice. They, they didn't like the like the spacing that I had in my voice. They thought that uh, um, I didn't talk naturally and stuff like that. And so it was kind of discouraging um, to continue. And but at the same time, like the amount of I guess I could say hate I got in terms of chills is, is nothing. Like, like if oh, you go to his Ch videos, like Chills every, every is other con destroyed. Yeah, I don't really think he deserves it. Like, I it's not like he's hurting anybody. Like, even if you don't, if you don't like his videos, you don't have to watch. Like, just it, not to yeah. you, but to like any like the comments. Like, mm -hmm. like go every other comment on his videos that I see is saying like, "Oh, why do you talk like that? Why do you sound so stupid?" Like, like it's so you, unwarranted. I know. I mean, like, if it's fine, it's fine that if you don't like his voice, but just don't watch his videos. You know, no. it's like. And the thing is, like, the reason I bring it up is I love his voice. I love how different he is. There is nobody like him at all. And, okay, his content drives me insane. I know he watches Tyler from Secure Team. Um, and some of the things that he goes over has either been debunked or has been covered by Secure Team. And it's, it is one way or another. And I know where he's taken it from. Because Secure Team is one of those channels where, um, if it's gonna, if you're gonna hear about it, they came out with the first kind of thing. They're, mm -hmm. they're like that quick, and then Chills like two weeks later will do it. So I always tell them like, Chills, what are you doing? You know that was Tyler's shit. What are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, like, I, I but, guess maybe because I'm not really in like on or into that whole. Like I feel like there's a very big difference between true scary stories and fictional stories. So I don't pay attention to a lot of channels that do true scary stories. Um, the thing of it is, they're so fake and half of them aren't even true. <laughs> yeah, that's something else I've noticed. Like, I, I don't really like want to say like say it too often to a lot of people that because a lot of people come to my channel and be like, "Oh, this is fictional." Well, that's just boring. I don't want to be like, "Well, you know, the true scary stories you listen to are are very fi uh, fictional too." Like they. Normally, like a lot of uh, true scary stories channel, what they'll do is they'll take a story that someone like someone tells them, and then they'll embellish on it. Of course, uh, or there will even even be some channels that have people that will rewrite the stories to make them more like listenable, if that's a word, to make them e yeah. like more. Because uh, if you know, if you listen to the way uh, these stories are told, not everyone who t who tells a scary story about someone they like I had a stalker or like this creepy encounter they had, not everyone is an English major, yet it sounds like all their Thank stories you. are told that way. So like, and that's like a lot of people that listen to these true scary stories don't really realize that they, they're, they're about as true as the true, like, you know, the movies you see in, uh, that come out say based on a true story type thing. Which I just want to break in based on a true story podcast, Dan Lefebvre, check it out. Great podcast. Dude, he takes like Apollo 13 and from the time they take off, the time they land he does <laughs> the true story of every radio transmission back to back and he does the voice for them for for um uh, mission control and then they do he does the voice for the astronauts and what they say back and what they really said back and forth and apollo 13 got so many things wrong it was insane not as much as you would think though it was pretty cool though like, I, mean, cool. I didn't know about that. What's the podcast name? It's called Based on a True Story Podcast, Dan, Dan LeFeb. Uh, what, what, what's your favorite podcast uh, app that you use? I actually don't really listen to podcasts. Um, I didn't, like, I've only recently learned what podcasting is. I know it's going to sound ridiculous. Because, uh, uh, no, like, a lot, of a lot of time people say, hey, you should have a podcast. I'm like, what's a podcast? Is that just, like, me doing what I'm doing now, but on iTunes? Like, I don't, I, I, I'm still unsure about what a podcast is. Like, um, okay, this is what a podcast is a what we're doing right now, and the thing is, what we're doing right now is it doesn't matter when it came out or anything. So it is just like what you're doing, but in just straight audio format. <clears throat> the great thing about a podcast is, and why a, a FM sucks, is it's, it's commercial free. <clears throat> it's more, it is more like, um, uh, how can I put this? If you're into something, say. You know, comedy or, I mean, 
uh, Phoenix and I, we do the show called The Podcasts Podcast, where we just come up with an insane genre that we don't know that they podcast exists for it. And each week we're blown away that these podcasts exist. So we'll, <laughs> so we'll take three of them. We have rules where they can't be new. <clears throat> so it's got to be 10 episodes in or, or more. They have to be current, right? Um, so because in podcasting, if you do 10 of them, you'll know pretty quickly whether you want to keep doing it or not. So, and then we'll, we'll take the three, we'll pick three episodes out of those three and that week we'll listen to them probably bitching and moan that we got to listen to this bullshit. And then when we come back, see Phoenix is a great comedian when he's tearing shit apart, you know? He's really quick and witty like that. So this provides great content for his type of comedy <clears throat> when he's at his funniest. And it's been working out great. The amount of the amount of downloads we've been getting a week and the feedback we've been getting, all the topics that we've been getting lately are coming from listeners now. <laughs> so, I mean, it's we, we touched on it. It's basically like talk soup, how they do nothing but reality shows, you know? Um, but so that was kind of the idea behind it and nobody was doing podcasts. So now we're basically destroying podcasts. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, man. I've never had so much fun. And, and then, uh, the other show I do with him is, uh, uh, the Twilight Zone review where we review all the Twilight Zones. Right now we're in season four, episode two. Nice. Right, so I haven't watched the Twilight Zone in a while. You know, but, the, uh, uh, so like... the uh, marathon's going on right now on Siffy or Sci-Fi, whatever. It's it's going on now till January second at four a.m. Cool, I'll have to check it out. Definitely, dude. But um, so like with when people say I should do a podcast, one thing that's confused me is like, okay, so like I've had the general idea that the oh, podcast. I'm the one that talking. told you about that. That's right. Uh, like uh, uh, I get that I have the general idea that podcast. You know, you just talk to the listener and stuff like that. But the thing is, like, I don't really know how to convert what I do into a podcast because I like. Okay, like what um, I need to you, have like sex take, or like talk. Huh? Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I can answer. Good. I can answer right away. Okay, when I said you should need to do a podcast because why limit yourself to one platform, right? Uh-huh. Uh, the content that you have, um, how long's the how long is the story at, on average? Like ten to fifteen. Uh, on av- well, lately they have been because I've been doing shorter videos, but normally they're anywhere from uh, twenty to thirty minutes. Okay, and uh, perfect. So all you need to do is find two of them that have a that have a basic, you know, level of, uh, you know, co- co- commonality, not identical, but in the same vein, mm-hmm. right? Take two of them. Um, you make one MP3 out of it. Get yourself a little intro, because you don't really have an intro, do you? I mean, uh, I, I, mean, I you do, do have the not big, one that's like no. it's not uh, like viewer based, like saying, "Hey, this is where you're listening." It's more of just kind of like a, "Hey, look at all the cool sound effect design I can do." Uh, right on. I mean, like uh, none of our like our intro, like um, let me let me see, um, both like the LIW podcast podcast <laughs> Phoenix is all the time, and uh, the LIW the Twice in Review. They both have um, like uh, intros, you know. Uh, this show, obviously, the intro is just a song that we like, and I would love Google to sue me for copyright. It'd be great. <laughs> you know? I, I want them to. <laughs> so anyway, I don't care about this show. But I, I have so much fun doing the show anyway. It's a lot of fun. And then, like, ICP, it, it's just it's just an intro, you know? Just a, a sound effect intro. Um, And the best intro is about 20, 25 seconds long. So you want to, and you you do all of all of your music on all of your uh, videos are 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 you know your music right? Yeah, yeah, and, I write all the music, and and you also write uh, uh, music for other channels as well, right? Uh, more so that like other channels use the music I've written. I don't. I I very rarely written songs specifically for channels. It's more yeah. so like they like my music, and so they use songs I've made. Yeah, because like I mean, I can remember on ten different occasions, uh, uh, the teach shouting you out. Yeah, yeah, he's he's really awesome. He's a really good guy. Yeah, man. Like, uh, and and, and that's what, and like you know he he always answers me back, whatever you know, on Twitter or or in the chat, whatever. 
he's always answering you back. So he's very, uh, you know, he, you know, he, he, even though he has a lot of subs and all, he's 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 very personal with everybody. He's just a cool dude. For and, sure. And then Corpse, man, you know, Corpse, please come back, man. I mean, and and he's another one. He did true stories, right? Yeah. But, but the true stories that he did, like I remember the one video, he was literally bitching for five minutes, telling people, like, look. Stop sending me all this bullshit. I don't want to do them. They're not interesting. <laughs> like, I understand things happen to you, but, I mean, come on. You know? <laughs> you you got to give me a break here. <laughs> I like, like, I don't want to rewrite your story so it sounds interesting. That's not, it's not what I do. I don't have the time to do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. be, and, and, like, honestly, like, like that, that fire and rescue, uh, uh, two hour, um, the search and rescue ones. Yeah, that that put him on the map, man. That made him over a million easy. Yeah, that's that's something I was gonna uh, I was gonna do. Like I started it, but then I was like, I should probably wait until I can do all these at once because there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's I see that one a lot. Which is which is um, what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, before I before uh that's something I was gonna say when earlier when we were talking about channels that don't really get uh like recognition. Um all, most of the views that I've or most of the subscribers I've gotten, and I'm talking like uh, sixty out of the seventy thousand that I have, have come from two videos. And it's because at, at random points those two videos were were recommended to people on their home screen. And the first time it happened was it was around March of this year. The second time it happened was about last month. Um, and it was the first one. It was with my moon video that has a, has a, uh, a million views. So, uh, just about a million views now. Watch the second it. one was with my, was with my hitman story, which almost has a v- million views now. Wh- uh, uh, wh- which hitman story? So uh, I'm a, I'm a contract killer and my last target wasn't human as the name of the story. Oh yeah. That, that one's badass. The, uh, those two videos because they like, which, which, Honestly, I like I enjoy those stories, but if someone was to say, "Hey, what are like what are your videos that you would want to show somebody to, you know, show your channel?" They great. they, de- they uh, those great. two would have never would even be in the top 10. Could, could, um can I can I steal that question and ask you that? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You already heard it. All right. Well, uh it's so like <laughs> um what I if someone was asked that what I would recommend is uh you like either the story I stole a laptop, um the left right game, which is a 6-hour story. Like it's uh like it's a huge story. It's now, a six like, hour long. Yeah, but, like uh, like like the, a six hour long story. Would that take you six hours long to record it, or how long do you think it took you? That took me about to, to record it, do the sound effects and everything. It took me about two months altogether. And like all like that that video in its entirety has only about ten thousand views, whereas the Hitman story, which isn't nearly as well produced, I don't think it's only it's only ten minutes long. Has almost a million, uh, and like, which I don't get YouTube. I don't get their. I, I thought I understood their like how. Let's, I thought I was starting to understand how they do things, but not at all. Because what's even more confusing is that my Hitman video doesn't even have any tags. Like I went, I went to look at it the other day, and I was like, wait, this video doesn't have any tags. When did that happen? I was like, then how what? the hell is it getting recommended to people? Like, I what's mean, being recommended on? Did, like, it, did it ever have tags or? I don't know because I don't remember deleting them, and I haven't updated that video since I made it. So I guess I just forgot to add tags when I made it. But like, like, why is it being like? I'm happy that it's being recommended to people, but why? Like, tell me why so I can do it with the other videos. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, I would love because it's to... just like it's just like chance, I guess. I I don't know. Maybe it's the um, maybe it's the title. But I have other videos that have this have similar titles. Like, I there's a there's another story that it's actually comes after that one. Um, and it's called I'm a contract killer and I wasn't allowed to kill my last target. That one has 300 views, like literally 300 views and people don't even know it exists because, and they always ask me, Hey, is there a sequel to the, to the hitman story? I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, it's in the playlist. It should have automatically played after that one. Like, and they don't, that's what drives me insane with, 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 with YouTube. It's like, um, when there's like a three, like, like, um, you know, like creepins and, uh, Scott's, uh, the Marine stories. Right, uh-huh. you yeah. watch you watch one, and then you think you're going to go to part two, and it jumps to somebody else. <clears throat> and I don't like talking smack on anybody. If if I don't like them, I won't listen to them. I'm just going to say a fact that a lot of times, uh, darkness prevails will pop up. I don't know why. 
and then I got to pull out my phone and change it. No offense to him. You know, I'm sure he does a great job. A lot of people like him. Mm-hmm. I, I personally, uh, he he doesn't he doesn't scratch me where I itch. His voice, uh, it, you know, it just isn't my bag. Nothing against him. All the luck to him. But he's the one channel that I see the most kind of implanted into a lot of, you know, um, auto plays. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Uh, I I kind of have noticed it, but I figured that was just because, like, what my channel is. It's probably going to get a recommended, like, that's probably what all my recommended videos are going to be. No, not from you. It'll come from... Uh, a... No, I mean, like, for me, like, when I'm looking at oh, YouTube, it'll right, recommend right. Uh, channels similar to my own. Oh, okay, so I do see enough. him a lot, but... Yeah. Um, uh, and Swamp Dweller pop up a lot, but he's worth it. Yeah, Swamp Dweller's Swamp Dweller's awesome. I remember uh, when he, I met him when he had about five thousand subs and I had one thousand, um, and uh, we used to do League of Legends duos teams, um, like ranked teams on uh, on his channel. Okay. But then like, like his subs were like, hey, I didn't subscribe for games and stuff like that, and then he stopped, which is understandable. Um, you, I, I you should I, always I kind of, have different channels for that. I think. Well, I, I, I like the fact, like, I've kind of gotten to a place with my subscribers where they're okay with that. Like, because that's, it's kind of like, I could have, like, I do have a gaming channel and I don't upload gaming videos, but I'll do gaming streams sometimes. Right. And it's, I don't, I'm not trying to gain subscribers from the gaming streams. I'm just playing, the, I'm just doing games for any of my current subscribers who might want to watch. You know, if you, if you don't want to watch, you don't have to. If you, if you're into that, hey, here's a stream for you. You can hang out with me. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and, uh. At first, you know, it definitely get a bunch of get some people like, hey, I didn't subscribe for this. I, I it's kind of, like I, they'd get mad, and, and I always kind of use the mentality of, if you go to McDonald's for a hamburger, are you gonna get mad and leave and vow to never eat there again because you learn that they also serve chicken? Or are you just not gonna eat the chicken? Like, there's no reason to get mad. There's no reason. It's not like you can. It's not like you can't enjoy my videos any less. Did you like? Like, there are some people. There are some people who are like, well, now you know. How am I supposed to get scared when I'm see- when I'm watching you play video games? Video games, and I'm like, "What did you think these videos were real? Did you think that I'm actually acting them out? I'm just a person <laughs> recording them in a room. At w- at what point? Do you like, really think I was the guy in there holding the gun? Yeah, it's like <laughs> that's, that's that's that was my mentality. That was hardcore, by the way, when you were playing that game the other day. I think Which it was. I, I don't know what game it was, but you had the gun. And you were talking about it had a red tip on it. You're like, this is a fake gun. Oh, a yeah. fake gun. And then you blew the dude's head off. You're like, I didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah, right. yeah, that was, um, that's that game called Visage, that horror game. Yeah, and I was, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, nah, man, the barrel and the uh, sight has to be red for it to be fake. But a lot of guns have a red um, sight on the top of the gun for for reason. Yeah, I didn't know that. But, they have, but so like, uh, yeah, you, you got to be really I also... into guns. Yeah, I, I do horror games, too, to kind of, like, fit the theme a little bit more. And it's not like I'm doing video game streams every night. It's more so just kind of, like, an extra thing for people who want it. Um, but uh, when I started my channel, it actually, I didn't actually, fit, like, decide that was what I was going to do for sure. It was more like, um, it was more like I want to have a, I want to make a YouTube channel. It'd be fun to make videos. And then I was like, okay, cool. What type of videos am I going to make? Uh, the first video I ever actually made wasn't a creepypasta. It was... Uh, uh, I do th- sometimes I do these stories called bad translations where I take stories from other countries and translate them to English and they're they're pretty gibberish that. nonsense. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. The the first video I ever did was one of those, but instead what I did was I took the game Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympics for like the Russian version and translated the reviews to English <laughs> and then read them. And the video's still up, and that was my first video. Um, so like when I made my channel, it was just more like, so just like, like a test. It was more so like just I wanna I wanna make a channel. Where I can make videos. It doesn't it doesn't really matter what the videos are. I just want to make videos, which is why I've never really like hid my face or tried to be all secretive and spooky and stuff with my videos. I, no, you, I, it's it's more personable. You know, what, like I and and and, and that's another thing that I, re, I respect YouTubers, <laughs> you, YouTubers for is like to actually show yourself on camera. I couldn't do it. You know, that's why I like the podcasting because like I got a gigantic head. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like, but I, I, I can't, I can't stand the people. It's like, uh, you know, the, you know, you, you pop on an email, people think they're going to get the story, whatever. But it's you playing a game. That's fine. Move along. You know, wait for the next one. What's the big I deal? Can see, 
I can understand the the like uh the what's the word the um not criticism. I don't really know if it's a complaint. I can understand people saying, "Well, if I'm subscribed to this, I don't want to get notifications for video games," which is understandable. That's totally understandable, and I can uh, that that is one statement that I can say I I agree that is a fair complaint. Like if you if you don't want to get notifications for games and you're not ex- you're not subscribed to a gaming channel. Then and you get those notifications. I can understand how that'd be annoying. That's fine. Um, but isn't the title uh, in the notifications? Yeah, the title is in the notification. And what I do is uh, I also uh, will kind of just try to make people aware about what I do on my channel, just so like they can preemptively, if they want notifications on, they can turn them on. Like it even says on my about page that I'm gonna play games sometimes. If you don't want to get notifications for that, just make make sure to not enable notifications. It says it in my description too. Right, right. Um, I try to give people a fair enough notification on, like, warning on that because that is a fair c- complaint, in my opinion. Um, I mean, and not, and not for nothing. Plus, it's not like you just sit there and play a game and have people watch you. You do kind of, you do interact with people during the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so I don't, I don't think they have much room to talk. Let's see. But people are going to bitch about anything anyway. <laughs> what time is it? No matter what, they'll bitch about it. Um, I actually do have to uh, go soon. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, sorry, dude. Sorry to dude, dude, I mean, dude, you too long. But... This show is for anything and whatever, and you know, I'm sure it's not going to be the first time you come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. It's definitely really fun. I've never um, done anything like this before. Um, definitely love to do it again. Right on, man. Um, uh, do you give me permission to play like a five-minute uh a thing or or if you want to send me the mp3 and i'll add it to the end of this so people can get a nice taste of uh you know what uh, one of the you know your favorite um you know what um is it okay uh how about the blink it w- w- would it be okay if um i added the blink to the end of this so people could listen to uh you know something from your channel and um you know so they can go and uh subscribe so, so yeah that, of course so that's totally fine so they know what great content they have yeah, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's totally fine. There is another narrator on that one with me, so if like you play any of the audio that includes him, you'll just want to, I guess, let people know his name. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure Scott would uh, have no problem with it. I'll, uh, I'll uh, DM Scott and let him know um, after we get done this, and uh, I'll make sure that he's cool with it before uh, you you send it over. And if he's not, no big, no big deal. There's plenty more to choose from. All right, cool, awesome. Yeah, that's totally fine. Uh, just let me know. Cool. Yeah, no problem. Sounds good, man. Oh, and uh, but uh, by the way, where's the best place they can find you on social on social media? So uh, on social media, it's uh, Twitter or Facebook is the best. Um, on Twitter, it's just uh, Dark Somnium. Same thing on Facebook, really. Just I don't really know how to give the link by t- saying it, but it's just you know like Twitter dot com forward slash Dark Somnium, uh, Facebook dot com forward slash Dark Somnium. Somnium is spelled S O M N I U M. Um, see, I've gotten a few questions about what somnium means. So I guess if anybody listening, I was just going to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somnium, it's Latin for dream. The dark dream. I like it. I, yeah, I have kind I of like this. a like fascination with dreams and what then like what they mean, like uh, subconsciously and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I used to actually, uh, as a kid, I'd have really, really bad nightmares. And one of the ways that I was able to stop that was actually by I started watching scary stories. Like I started watching the things that were scaring me, like the movie It. That scared that gave me so many nightmares. So I just started watching it over and over again until I stopped having nightmares. Um, and uh, kind of like embracing the things I was afraid of made it so I wasn't afraid of them anymore. And so that's that's why one of the reasons why I chose that name is because I'm kind of just like fascinated with dreams and stuff. And did it work for you? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I, like that's awesome. Basically. And uh, it's actually so well that a lot of people will say, like, hey, do your stories ever creep you out? I'm like, no, nah, not really. Like, I could record these <laughs> at 3 in the morning, you know, in complete darkness. I'm fine. It's not like not a big... The only story that's ever creeped me out is a story I did called In Between the Static because uh, it's about aliens. And I don't like aliens because I don't like lanky things, like with long fingers that creep me out. <laughs> and uh, aliens, they're... Ew. Yeah, they're lanky. Well, I mean, so, yeah, well, but some are really big and fat, you know, and so, somehow they walk. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, that would be pretty scary, too. But, uh, like, I'm just talking about, like, uh, there's a movie. You ever see The Fourth Kind? Yes. Yeah, that movie kind of creeped me out. 
It was very creepy, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, for a while, I had dreams about just like owls watching me from outside my window. And I was like, yep, time to watch that movie on repeat until that stops happening because that's freaking me out. Uh, do, do you do you have Netflix before you go? Do you have Netflix? Yeah, I do. Okay, the Europa Report, man, awesome movie. It's... Was it about aliens? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. You don't see them. Oh, oh, even better. There you go. It's all up to it's the imagination. A, it's a very phys- It's a very psychological thriller. It's very. It's it's short, ninety minutes tops, and the ending will blow your freaking socks off, dude. I that's lo- what sucks about the fourth kind, though, is you didn't see them. You didn't see them at all in the fourth kind. The only time you ever saw them was when that one girl was giving her like re, re, uh, like her account of what happened, and you see those those uh, those shadowy sh- uh, those shadowy figures kind of walking the room. That's it. That's the that's the closest look you ever get at them. Otherwise, they never appear. In set in, except for like in the illustrations of the owls, which just look like owls. Yeah, they, yeah, they call them the uh, ooh, what do they call them, the grays or something. Now you're freaking me out. God damn! It. Oh, my window's open. Ah, damn it. So, but look, uh, out, look, I, look behind me. There's gonna be a bunch of gray aliens standing out there, and I'm gonna have to flip them <laughs> off. And 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 by the way, they're green, not gray. So, uh, uh, by the way, on Twitter, it's at dark underscore somnium. So there you go on Twitter. There. I just wanted to throw it out there so people make sure they find it. But if you go to Way Off Topic Radio, just drop the A. Uh, you'll 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 find them under my latest retweets. So there you go. Awesome. Well, thanks again for having me, man. It was really fun. I'd love to do it again sometime. Dude, definitely. Um, you know, it, it was a lot of fun and definitely a lot more to talk about for sure. And uh, hopefully, I'm sure Scott will be fine with it. And right now, U UK, so it's about. Uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon, we'll be able to get him. Yeah. <laughs> oh That's, my God, it's eight a.m. He's he's part of the collaboration I'm doing with the which is one of the reasons why I gotta uh, go is because I'm supposed to finish up some audio for that. But uh, so uh, yeah, Scott's gonna be in that. I think I mentioned that before. Yep, yep, Scott Pye. Uh, if you want to, yeah, I I think he has at Scott P Y I don't know weird he spells his name all weird. You'll be you'll be fine. <laughs> Na- it's uh, S K O T T I think. Yep, uh, but it's just like nature's time for you to be able to find there. But uh, I mean, uh, if 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 you scroll down my timeline a little bit, uh, I said happy holidays to a few of my favorite guys there, and uh, of course Ronnie here was, uh, of course, one of them. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll be able to find some really, really, really get great content there. And uh, actually, uh, before this show, I sent a few of uh, loyal ICP listeners uh, a few of the videos from all you guys, and they're all going nuts over like i didn't know creepy boss was like this is great i'm like yeah no <laughs> they really need to change that name <laughs> so yeah anyway. no yeah it's probably gonna i think i feel like uh, it's, they're gonna be starting to ref- like being referred to as no sleep stories instead of creepy pastas pretty soon here i like that a lot you know and, and 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 that's why i always say my uh short short story narrators that's why i say it that way it just it, it makes them sound more professional more like i don't know respectful not respectful but um i i think it gives like a i don't know i i eh, whatever i'm rambling i'm rambling more but but that's no, what i get you like creepy boss <laughs> is kind of like associated with a lot of um really slender man bad, right yeah, 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 yeah really bad stories and really weird fan base so i got you yeah definitely so all right um and then uh, yeah, uh, the Dark Somnium on YouTube. Check it out, uh, you know, and uh, content, you know, all over the place. I mean, it, 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 there's something for you. Trust me. And hopefully, uh, I'll talk to Scott. And yeah, I just repeat myself three times. So no. <laughs> uh, there's only there's one way we uh, kind of end this, and it's the it, it's the it's the Lopez way. So everybody have a great New Year. Hope your 2018 will just was was shitty, and 2019 even more. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, I'll uh, I'll I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, see you, man. Later. On March 25th at 1457 GMT, the world stopped for 27 minutes and 54 seconds. No one noticed at first. Those that eventually did were ordered to keep quiet. There was no sudden jolt, no collapsing into unconsciousness, no transition into utter darkness and back again. Nothing. For everyone, time had appeared to pass as normal, one second moving uneventfully into the next. Birds flew, people talked, and the wind and rain blew and fell respectively. Nothing had occurred to indicate that anything untoward or unexpected had happened to the inhabitants of the earth. 
Only those who looked beyond our planet and its ring of constantly chattering satellites now found that the rest of the universe told a different story. NASA and related space agencies noticed first. Signals to ongoing missions beyond those in orbit around the Earth were off by almost 30 minutes. Frantic investigation revealed that the same time discrepancy was occurring for all incoming signals. Naturally, they came to the conclusion that the problem must therefore lie not with these external elements, but with the computers on Earth. But this led to a bigger question. One computer glitch was possible, but all of the various space agencies' computers across the globe showing the same failure at the exact same time? Naturally, a virus or a sophisticated global hacking attack was the next obvious answer. An international team to investigate such a large, well-coordinated cyber attack was being discussed when the first calls of alarm came in from the confused and concerned astronomers. The true significance of what had actually happened became known. Using data retrieved from the telescopic arrays at Jodrell Bank, Palo Alto, Mount Pleasant, and other across the world, confirmed against existing stellar records and communicational models of the exact galaxy and beyond. It became apparent that for 27 minutes and 54 seconds, Earth had somehow been out of sync with the rest of known time and space. In essence, the world as we know it had winked out of existence during this period, and then returned as if nothing had happened. For all intents and purposes, during that short window of time, we had ceased to be. The international investigation team was repurposed, a blank check written, giving it its pick of resources and the best minds in their fields, all to investigate this one event, and all sworn to utmost secrecy. None of them needed to be told the panic that would ensue if this information became public before a suitable and hopefully reassuring reason could be given for the event. Those that couldn't keep silent were quickly and quietly silenced themselves. Despite the various project names assigned to the sub-teams, those involved began referring to the event in a half-joking manner as the day God blinked. In casual conversation between project members, this was eventually shortened even further to just the blink. After six rings, Ben finally answered the door. Mark, what are you doing here? You invited me, remember? Did I? How odd. Well, I probably had a reason at the time. Still good to see you anyway. Come on in. I would known Ben since childhood. We attended the same school for a while, before his crazily high IQ led him on the fast track of higher education and beyond. We kept in touch, though. His parents were sensible enough to realize he needed some grounding in the real world, and encouraged our friendship with the usual sleepovers and camping trips. Their smarts lay in forcing Ben not to let his social skills atrophy completely like a lot of very intelligent kids were known to do. As a result, whilst he was frequently sidetracked and forgetful, he still functioned in normal society with a degree of success. After our respective schooling had finished, we both moved into the IT industry, although at vastly different levels. For myself, I now worked in tech support, mostly maintaining insurance systems for a range of small independent companies. Boring, but it paid well and allowed me to travel. He, on the other hand, was self-employed and preferred working from his apartment of solitude, as he called it, referring to himself as a consulting technician. He'd gotten the idea from watching reruns of Sherlock. His work was a lot more varied and advanced, and whilst he never openly admitted to hacking, he certainly had enough technical knowledge and experience to have been employed in the past by such names as Google, Microsoft, and IMB, when they needed someone to test the all-new, unshakable security system they'd just put in place, or track down those that had subsequently been able to breach their all-new, unshakable security system they'd just put in place. It added the thrill of the chase, plus it usually paid better. What was less known was the work he occasionally did off the books for such groups as the Department of Defense and NASA. He admitted his working for them was twofold. One, they wanted his expertise and brilliance. And two, it allowed them to keep tabs on his expertise and brilliance. He didn't mind this. And as he explained once, Well, it keeps them happy knowing where I am and what I'm doing. 
at least what they think I'm doing. And then he'd grin and pass me the latest decoded email he'd intercepted. He didn't do anything with the stuff he found. He just enjoyed the challenge. To be completely honest, sometimes it was hard to pin down just who Ben was and what his motivations were from one moment to the next. I'd just grown up accepting him and his eccentricities, quickly moving to the conclusion his life was a complex pattern of impulses and ideas woven together from threads that were as much madness as genius. There was his belief that every time someone said abracadabra, an angel lost its wings, or that the common cold existed as a vast hive mentality that avoided detection by its elements constantly hopping from body to body. Mad crazy shit like that. Half the time I thought he was joking, and for the rest I just hoped he had enough common sense to rein it in in public. Then there were times that he did and said things that ended up on the opposite end of that when what he said made absolute unnerving sense. On those occasions, he spoke with such a lucidity that seemed to cut through all the crap humankind had built around its certainties and beliefs, as if he'd touched on some universal truth we should all by rights know. All I could do at those times was marvel at how someone with such a kaleidoscope for a brain, entertaining such a maelstrom of contradictory thoughts constantly, could suddenly bring all of those elements together to produce those single, blindingly white lights of truth. Then he'd suddenly go off on a tangent, accusing his neighbors of being CIA agents, trialing neurotoxins on local cats, and we'd be back to normal. Still, I came at a summons. Despite the crazed theories and odd habits, it was definitely the most entertaining conversation around. Plus, his library of illegally downloaded films was truly a wonder to behold. That, and uh, he was my friend. It was during a piece of work for NASA, idling through their secure systems looking for proof of Area 51 during his off time, that led him to first discover and then piece together all the facts concerning March 25th and the blink found by the international team so far. Being his only close friend, he decided to fill me in on this ongoing conspiracy, mainly so he could show off his talents once more, hence the invitation. As he spoke, he appeared completely oblivious to how my face was gradually growing more and more incredulous. He described what the world's space agencies and astronomers had discovered, and how a secret scientific think tank was now investigating what had happened. Physicists, quantum theorists, mathematicians, the whole spectrum of science, all focused on this one problem and the questions associated with it. What had happened, and why had it happened, and most importantly, was it likely to happen again? And if so, what was the risk of it being permanent? He told me of the total news blackout, and how any amateur astronomers or similar who now came to the same conclusion were to be either brought on board, treated as cranks, or disappeared with extreme prejudice. Their biggest fear was a mass panic, he said, or the world's religions taking credit on behalf of their respective gods, and several genocidal wars kicking off as a result. There's nothing more disconcerting, I guess, than not being able to trust your own reality. We've been raised in a world where it's fine to distrust your government, your employees, even your family, but your own entire existence? Definitely a recipe for chaos. Places like CERN have been placed on almost permanent hiatus. The governments of the world have no proof experiments like the ones they were doing. They're the cause. But I suppose they had to point the finger somewhere until more evidence showed up. There's a lot of theoretical work being done now, but pretty much zero practical. I guess it's only a matter of time before they get the scriptwriters from Doctor Who to brainstorm a possible cause. He sighed at this, sat back in his swivel chair and spun around, gazing at the ceiling, seemingly lost in thought. Then he slowly came to a stop and returned his gaze to me, a mischievous twinkle in his eyes. Then on the other side, you have religions. At this, he paused again, looked around his cluttered desk, and then started building what looked like a tower of various bits and pieces. As it slowly grew in height, he continued speaking. Remember what Bible class says, like the stories, if not the morality. I especially like the story of Babel. The rising structure of books, hard drives, chocolate bars, magazines, and other random items his hands could find and reach had risen to a height just below his chin. He added a few more items, 
adding to the precarious sway it already had, pausing again, his hands not touching it but spread wide on the other side ready to stop an imminent collapse. He attempted the voice of an old English vicar delivering a sermon. Man, in his wisdom, decided to build a tower to God, so he may converse with his creator. God, though, in his glorious wisdom, decided man should not be allowed to do this, and took steps to rectify the situation. So he cursed mankind with the gift of many tongues. He smirked at this, his eyes never leaving his tower, and returned to his normal voice. Well, many a project, plan, or peace has been ruined by the inability of people to understand each other. It might be that humanity is overreaching itself again. With the final proof of existence of the Higgs boson, maybe God's decided we're getting too close again, and he's selfish about his tricks. Time for another lesson, perhaps. At this, he slowly closed his hands into fists on either side of the precarious edifice he had created. Then, with a single finger, and gingerly pushed it near the top. With a crash, his metaphorical tower scattered across the table and the floor. He waited until the sounds of books and rubbish falling had died away before speaking again, this time in a thoughtful voice. Maybe the blink, as they call it, was God giving us a heads up. A warning to stop encroaching on his intellectual property, else risk the consequences. Then he grinned his tried-and-true atheism once more reasserting itself. Personally, looking at all the facts so far accumulated, I believe the answer lies even further afield, he said, a knowing smile on his face. I took a comfort break at this point, shaking my head at this new conspiracy theory. When I got back, he'd moved on already, his head now buried in the side of a PC tower case now perched on a different desk he'd reserved for mechanical endeavors. It was quiet for a while, broken only by his humming as he fiddled inside the case while I looked for somewhere reasonably clean to sit. Then, abruptly, he spoke again, his voice oddly masked by the case. As I was saying, I believe the answers they seek lie further afield. I have statistical proof, in fact. Statistics? It, you? He'd often laughed at statistics in the past and blamed them for 63.75% of the world's ills. In his mad pedantry, he had indeed worked out a formula that he said proved this figure. That being said, he told me once he could destroy the world with a single spreadsheet, and in my more fatalistic moments, I honestly believed him. I accept statistics and all the perceived infallibility are the most fallible things in the world. He mumbled from inside the case, reaching aimlessly for the screwdriver on the desk next to him with a hand colored orange and black from a mixture of grease and Cheetos. Take a work of fiction and add numbers to it, and suddenly it becomes non-fiction. Add a pie chart and a graph and it becomes an inviolate truth. B bollocks said I, only half listening as I lounged on a large, dirty beanbag littered with wrappers and odd wire. He'd then retracted his head from the case looked me in the eyes and said with a devilish glint in his own pass it to the right people in the right places at the right time and it becomes law hmm i replied deciding not to entertain his paranoid fantasies further in favor of a magazine i just found on the floor amongst all the other junk haphazardly discarded as part of his less than ordered less than sanitary lifestyle he grunted at my lack of enthusiasm for continuing one of his favorite topics, and buried his head back in the tower case once more before continuing anyway. However, in those cases I'm referring to your basic biased statistics. Marketing, pressure group, political, that kind of unreliable crap. Now pattern recognition, that element within the field of otherwise exploitable statistics, that I do have time for. Extracting his head again, he looked around the desk the case was on, shifting papers this way and that as he continued, partially lost in thought. You've heard of SETI, of course. Hold on, if we're heading into alien territory, you can kiss my ass right here and now. He fixed me with a glare, and I threw my hands up in resignation, muttering, I'm sorry, please continue, oh knowledgeable one. Thank you. SETI, the search for extraterrestrial life, one of their jobs being the analysis of signals bouncing in and around our local galaxy. 
of which they have never found any conclusive proof of intelligent life, I reminded him pointedly. He ignored me. What if the patterns they've been looking for are wrong? What if you could analyze the seemingly random signals another way? What if there is a pattern? But it's spread over a long period, so you don't even recognize it as a pattern. Aha! Uh -huh. Triumphantly, his hand came out of a pile of books, clutching a pad of post-it notes, scattering the books across the desk in doing so. Fishing a pen from his trouser pocket, I saw him scribble to do on top note and slap it onto the side of the tower's case. Have you been watching the Discovery Channel again? Is there a UFO special on this week? He looked at me indignantly. Though I noticed he quickly closed a TV guide that had been opened on his desk amongst the mess. What if I told you I'd written my own pattern recognition algorithm? What if I told you that I had found a message in those signals? Bullshit, I said quietly, suddenly less sure of myself. Now more than a little shaken by what this meant if he had indeed succeeded in discovering a message from an alien race. Well, it wasn't easy, he continued, feigning an air of false modesty. And I do have the NSA to thank. Although if they discover I've been running this algorithm in the background on their decryption supercomputer, then I may have to leave abruptly. Or apologize. You never can tell what mood they'll be in one day to the next. Ben... What about the message? I said firmly, cutting him short, standing to face him. Oh, that. He went quiet, looking around evasively. My doubts quickly returned. What was the message, Ben? Well, it was short. And it is really rather impressive decoding anything like this, obviously. Ben! He paused, and then said abjectly, Hello. Are you content? There was a few seconds of silence before I started laughing uncontrollably, mostly out of relief. Ben looked indignant. Well, I think it's a very poignant message. Better than prepare to be annihilated. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a second. I can't breathe. You had me shitting myself for a moment there. I take it then you don't believe what I found is a message from an alien race. <laughs> Would you please oh. stop laughing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Ben... You've got to admit, if you were to imagine contact from another species, I think I'd be looking for something a little more, I don't know, profound? I mean, we've sent out a gold disc giving a snapshot of the human race and our knowledge. Music, mathematics, you name it. And what do the hyper-intelligent aliens send back? The equivalent of have a nice day? You don't think it's from outer space, then? He reiterated. I looked at his pained expression and answered in a more reasonable voice. Look, Ben, I think your algorithm found a pattern that wasn't there, and extrapolated meaning from it. Turning, I returned to the beanbag and my perusal of the magazine. He stood there for a few moments, and then turned and flopped down in a large, comfortable swivel chair behind another desk, this one littered with laptops in various states of construction and destruction connected by an array of cables in what appeared like a haphazard fashion. Pressing the switches on three of them, his face was illuminated in the telltale glow of their screens, his focus flitting between the screens and his fingers dancing across the keyboards in front of him. He had nevertheless decided to continue, and began outlining his newest theory. I disagree. I'll even go further and state that this is an alien species with an interest in the human race, a species directly involved in the evolution of mankind. Oh, here we go. Are we really back on the engineer's theory once more? Has Ridley Scott been sending you a secret message in his films again? I muttered, not looking up from the page I was now reading. He ignored this and continued. Think about it. The human body is an amazing machine. It regulates itself heals itself, and has the ability to create more of itself through reproduction. I thought you only believed in things you had experienced for yourself, I asked, peering over the top of the magazine at him, my voice now openly amused. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, the human body is an amazing machine. And that's exactly what it is, a piece of technology built using biological parts rather than mechanical ones. It is not, however... A perfect machine. What do you mean? I asked, despite myself. Well, think about it. 
It has its own defense capabilities in the form of white blood cells to ward off illness, the ability to heal wounds, etc., etc. Occasionally, though, this excellent piece of machinery goes wrong. It functions incorrectly. It overreacts to certain stimuli. It has a faulty piece of code, if you will. And what's that? Why, cancer, of course. What? I asked, shocked despite myself. It was only another crazy conversation with Ben, but the word cancer always sent an involuntary shiver down my spine. I'd seen enough of its effects on friends and family to be adverse to even its mentioning. Cancer is the body performing incorrect actions, creating cells where it does not need to. It's not an attack from an external source causing this, but rather an internal failure of the biological system. A mistake, nothing more. We have, in essence, a design flaw, and if our god or gods are supposedly infallible, then logic dictates we are not built by a benign, omnipotent being, but rather are constructs of more fallible ones. Action should be taken to rectify these errors. To complain, if you will. Despite myself, I took another look over the magazine at him, nervous now for a reason I couldn't quite put my finger on. What did you do? Well, I sent them a message back telling them this, of course. I hadn't seen Ben in six months. Work had kept me busy in London, and he wasn't one for texting or casual telephone conversations to catch up. And then one day he called me up suddenly to come visit. This time, snippets of information about the blink had begun to leak out on the internet, on even some of the more respected sites and journals. Most normal people saw it as just another mad conspiracy theory. Having spoken to Ben before, though, when he had outlined all the data, the fact that other sources were now relaying the same information sent chills through me. It was one thing for it being just another of his crazy theories, but quite another when a growing number of external bodies were now seeming to confirm the event's existence. This time, when I rang his doorbell, he answered on the first ring, but I wasn't ready for the sight when he opened the door. He was haggard and tired, like he hadn't slept in days, and his clothes were rumpled and dirty, even more so than normal. As I stood there, I caught a look in his eyes. They were bloodshot, and there were large, dark circles under them. But there was a calm I hadn't seen before, which was echoed in his voice as he welcomed me in. I couldn't quite put my finger on it at first, but then it dawned on me. I had seen this kind of response before in those who were in the final stages of terminal illness acceptance. I felt my body prickle with unease, that chill that ripples across your skin when you stop thinking in the past or the future and all your attention is suddenly focused on the now because you know the world you're used to is about to change in some fundamental way. I paused in the doorway and looked him in the eyes. Then, without thinking, I drew him into a massive bear hug. Ben had never been one for physical contact all of the time I'd known him. But he accepted the hug without question, and I felt some of the tension released from him. We parted after a short while, and I asked him sincerely, Are you okay? There's nothing wrong with you? No. No. Nothing physically, at least. Good. Good. Because you look like shit. He laughed weakly at that, and then quieted. We stood there silently for a few moments before the thought that had been nagging at my mind since he'd invited me forced itself out. I've noticed on the web there's been a lot of noise about this blink thing you mentioned last time. I was wondering, did you get an answer? He smiled weakly, ignoring my question, inviting me in and simply pointing to the large beanbag for me to sit, as I had done so many times before. If anything, his apartment was even messier than last time, but somehow the impression of organized chaos was gone. This was just a mess that had been left to accumulate, like the owner no longer cared. As I sat down, he went over to a desk and fiddled with a laptop, moved some random items on the desk, almost like he was stalling. Then, turning to face me, resting himself against the desk, he asked me in a vague voice, Do you remember what I was talking about the last time you visited? You mean the alien thing? I answered, trying to make my voice sound light. The smirk on my face, forced and obviously fake. I'd given in to his suspicions and he knew it. Before, he would have rubbed this fact in my face, but today, he didn't. 
Such things didn't seem to matter to him anymore, which made my voiceless fears even greater. Not just humanity, but all life on Earth has been engineered. An external source created it and maintained it. It is my belief. <laughs> at this, he laughed the dry, mocking laugh at his use of a word he had previously despised. It is my belief now that the Earth has experienced various stages of life. There have been several of these stages back from when the Earth was first formed up to and including today. Of these earlier versions, we have no substantial evidence. The last one before us, though, we do have several indicators lying around. He left the hanging, waiting for my mind to catch up. It didn't take long, although I was surprised at how easily I was accepting what was possibly another one of his eccentric theories. You mean the dinosaurs, don't you? I said quietly, his restraint somehow infecting me as well. A small smile arranged itself on his lips, though the sadness never left his eyes. Indeed, those big stumbling sods before us. For the sake of clarity, I have classified them as version 5.0 of life on Earth. We are version 6.0, I now have reason to believe. What about your message? Did you get an answer? I asked again, a bit more impatiently. Not just my message. The Earth's been sending radio signals and more are out for quite a few years now. What are you trying to say, Ben? If we can find their signals, as I've proven, they can certainly pick up ours. Even the unintended ones. What are you trying to say, Ben? That they got our messages and they took action. I tried to swallow now in a dry throat. What action? You work at technical support. What is usually your first recommendation when something stops working correctly? I don't know. Uh, usually turning it off and back on does the trick in a majority of cases. At this, my voice trailed off as I realized what he was implying in the last 27 minutes and 54 seconds. Ben started laughing, trailing off into a sad cough as he saw what he'd said take hold in my mind. Then suddenly went off on a tangent, just like the old days. And I listened, despite the sick feeling in the pit of my stomach at what I was now thinking. Chariots of the gods! Chariots of the frigging gods! Imagine that! Aliens coming down to teach ancient civilizations new tricks. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe version 6.0 was still under warranty at the time. And part of the warranty included on-site maintenance. Hell... Oh. My money's on Greek gods actually being extraterrestrial consultants sent down to fix bug problems. Makes you wonder which fucked up piece of code triggered Pompeii. I suddenly raged. Maybe he was in one of his mad faces again, but I knew that he wasn't. The sane, logical part of me didn't want any more truth. I knew I couldn't handle any more. I looked up, and Ben was staring at me. Not in anger, but in sympathy. He settled down next to me on the beanbag passing me a beer he had obviously just fished out of the small fridge he kept behind his desk. I took a long swig, let my breast settle, and then passed it back. Taking that as a cue to continue, he did, but quieter this time, less tinged with the hysterical note that had appeared to be emerging in his speech earlier, like he'd reached the peak of his madness and was now trailing off. It would explain why so many people believed in pantheons of gods back in the day. Alien engineers popping down to fix the system whilst we're still covered. Just like Microsoft ending support of older versions of Windows, though. Maybe we just passed the date where version 6.0 of life on Earth was covered, so they stopped coming. He took a swig and passed it back, his voice now wistful, his eyes unfocused, trying to look across the unfathomable void. And now, in this age of radio and microwave signals, the people of Earth are finally sending messages and emails that can be picked up by their gods. Bemoaning this and that failure with their bodies, their families, and the world around them, demanding answers, and these messages tumble out across the ether of space, picked up by some backwater tech support desk in some forgotten nebula. The number of messages reaching across the critical mass, a statistical point where action must be taken, 
and some alien equivalent of a high school dropout named Gary checks a scrap of paper on his desk for the instructions to an age-old piece of software. He down the rest of his beer, and he turns it on and off again. Silence reigned for a few minutes, during which he stood and made another trip to the fridge, this time bringing back several more bottles. He settled back down on the beanbag and passed me one before he spoke again. I looked at him incredulously and demanded, Jesus, Ben, what did it say? His eyes were dark, pausing a long while before reaching into his back pocket and slowly unfolding a piece of paper, mumbling something about decryption software, language analysis, and word auto-formatting before passing it to me. Dear Earth, Thank you for replying in regard our recent query as to your ongoing happiness with our software. We passed on your multiple concerns to the relevant technical support help desk. Unfortunately, ongoing support of your current version of Life 6.0 has ended. The initial reboot of your hardware slash software attempted previously appears to have not resolved your issues. Therefore, we will be refreshing your system to previous stable release, Life 5.3. Your contract does not include backup slash restoration of existing data, so all current data will be wiped post version life 5.3. Thank you for using life and please contact us if further issues occur. Best regards. Refresh? Was all I could mutter, confusion and dread dulling my senses. Using the version numbering as a guide, my guess is that would be resetting the Earth back to the late Jurassic period. He murmured thoughtfully, taking another swig of beer. I sent a message back, of course, asking them to not do anything. I even coached it in the proper terms. We have decided to continue with our current installation. Please do not reboot nor refresh the system. Please ignore all other bug reports unless forwarded by me. Ben Grover, sysadmin of Earth. Bug reports? Prayers. Oh. Then I looked at him again, the look of disbelief obvious in my eyes. Sysadmin of Earth? He didn't meet my gaze, but rather sheepishly kept his eyes locked to his beer bottle. Well, I had to sound like I was in charge, didn't I? Do you think they got your message? I asked hopefully after a pause. I honestly don't know. We can hope, though. By my calculations, we'll know in the next couple of hours or so. That's why I invited you over, I guess. So we can watch the end together. Then again, we might just wink out of existence. His voice trailed off. Silence reigned again, broken only by our occasional sips. There wasn't, in all truth, very much else to say. After a while, he finished his beer rested it gently down next to him, and then yawned expansively, leaning back on the beanbag with his hands clasped behind his head, and said matter-of-factly, Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't think the dinosaurs were given a fair enough crack of the whip the first time round. Only right they should get another go. I turned in disbelief to argue with him at his irresponsible attitude, then saw the barely suppressed laughter in his eyes. When all was said and done, what was there left to do but wait and see what happened and laugh at the absurdity of it all? He started, and I joined in, till the tears were rolling down our cheeks, and we sat there, laughing and drinking beer until our world ended. Maybe.